Hello again, and welcome once more to the History of Comics. My name is Paulo, and today I'm having the second episode on my series of oddball items in my collection. Uh, what did I show last time? Oh yeah, the last time I showed you a graphic novel about, which was sort of a political thriller and uh, with the music industry in Germany during the 1970s called One Model Nation. Today I'm going to show you something a little bit uh, more more natural uh, from a uh, in, from an independent point of view. This is probably my first uh, independent comic. Um, I bought it in 1997 or 98, probably about 98. And um, I'm very sad that this did not go beyond volume one. Uh, we're talking about uh, A Touch of Silver by Jim Valentino. Jim Valentino, as you know, is one of uh, Image Comics' founders. And at the time that he produced this book, he had been promoted to publisher, and this was some, some time after the um, market implosion, uh, speculative bubble burst, and uh, Image Comics uh, rode on that speculative bubble. The much of their popularity stemmed from having uh, their comics continuously uh, target of, uh, of the speculators. And, but that ended uh, between 1994 and 1996, uh, and with uh, Marvel's bankruptcy eff affecting um, comic shops, uh, even Image uh, was forced to come up with a different strategy. And, and Valentino, uh, who started uh, in, the, um, in the independent movement, he, he first developed uh, Normal Man, which was published by Renegade Press in the, in the first half of the 1980s. Uh, and it was before, before that, that it was, that was before he started working for, the, for Marvel and DC. And at Marvel, he is more, more famous for creating a, a few interesting what-ifs, but also a, for a long run on the first half of the 1990s, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, which features the original Guardians of the Galaxy not the, the ones that appear in the movie. I'm, I'm, talk, I'm talking uh, Major Vince Astro and uh, Charlie 27, Yondu and Nikki and uh, Starhawk and Martin X. Uh, so Jim Valentino launched a line of independent looking comics, uh, including a replacement, what was called Replacement God. Um, it, he was in charge of uh, republishing Bone in there. And there were a few other black and white comics that were not the norm for what Image was used to doing. Everybody knew Image as the one with the uh, independent superheroes, more flesh than substance. And Valentino, who came from a different background, wanted to change all of that. So the, I, I bought this because I thought it, it looked cute. Uh, and it kind of is. Uh, this is a this is a semi-autobiographical work uh, based on uh, Valentino's childhood experiences. And it's basically the story of a, of a young boy trying to learn what it's like to, to be a man uh, without his father around. And he chooses uh, comic book superheroes uh, to be his role models. Uh, community at, at the time, because we're talking about early 1960s, and of course, you can't show Marvel and DC here, but the Valentino got around to them alternative. This is the story of David Silver, a boy of about 10 years old. He is sort of bullied at school, a daydreamer. He does not apply himself very much, and at home. He has an absentee father that only comes back to to yell at them and and beat them, and well, he, and his mom sometimes loses patience with him, so he finds refuge with comic books. You can see the the bed full of, full of comics. He's also having to deal with a 
who is first Christian uh, on a neighbor. Also going through, through troubles in her life, uh, her father walked out on her mother. And when a lot of things don't go well in his life, he does get a, a new bike for, a, for his birthday party. He's at the irritation number one. But it doesn't, it doesn't go well, so once more, he goes back as refugee in comics. So, uh, you're not sure you can see this, picks up a was to mystify, and um, that was a, a funny way that uh, Valentino had of representing the, of showing the, the DC and Marvel comics, since he couldn't show them here. He chose their uh, image counterparts. Image had launched a a Marvel-inspired series by Alan Moore called 1963, uh, which uh, lasted for six issues and was supposed to end in an annual uh, made by the Image founders. That was never made. So the story doesn't end. What we end up with is a Marvel pastiche that um, to explore one day in the life of uh, what would those Marvel heroes be like if they were created by Alan Moore. The other alternative here is the for the DC universe is that he uses Big Bang comics. Uh, Big Bang uh, were published by Image at the time. Uh, they were created by by Gary Carlson and. Uh, they were very much inspired on, on the JLA and the, and the JSA. Issue number two season, trying to get his first girlfriend. And he finds that his comics have been uh, thrown away by by his mom, because she feels that uh, her little boy is growing up, so he doesn't need the comics anymore. So he's, go he's growing up, but he needs his comics. He he's very, very upset here, as you can see. The, the, the comic books represent, of course, since since they're his role models, they they represent the only way he can learn about about the world from them, uh, about what it's like to to become a, a moral person. And by getting rid of his comics, he understands that they don't want him to to be a to learn what it's like to be a moral person. And he's going to find himself. Uh, Bit more lost without me. So just to the school dance here. So, sometimes some good things happen to him. It's not it's not all all bad, but uh, he really doesn't like his life, and so he ends up with his dad always coming back from his long trips to be mad at him and. And his teacher not understanding him, nor making any effort to, and of course, ultimately, getting in a fight with bullies. He actually ends up standing up to them, but that's what that's what he learns from, learns from comic books: how to beat up supervillains. Uh, but it's sort of a life lesson, and it's not the only one. Issue number four says, sees his, his parents finally reaching the boiling point and his father taking him away from his mother. And he gets to meet the reason why 
who's always always keeps disappearing. Uh, he has a mistress in another town, so they they fly away there, and he doesn't know what to do with this new town. He ultimately goes back to finding new new comic books. Moral Syndicate, the version of the Avengers. It's fun to just try sometimes, but he really does not know how to, how to be a father. And fortunately, uh, the, the book does not continue beyond this. The, this collects the first five issues, and Jim Valentino published six. And I actually had number six in my hand. I, I, remember, I remember seeing it before I bought the, I bought the trade, and I didn't buy it, so I don't have the complete story. And it's not a complete story. The Valentino was very busy uh, running Image at the time, and he ended up not paying enough attention to his creative endeavors, and uh, never went back beyond issue number six. He, he has gone on to do other things uh, in, the, in the meantime. So, I doubt very much that we will see uh, a picture of Silver. A, a sad and beautiful tale of a, of a young boy growing up. And finding solace in the, in the world of superheroes. So that's it. This is an, the, my second oddball item in my collection. Uh, I haven't read this in over ten years, uh, but it was nice picking it up, picking it up again, and uh, going through through the pages. The the thing about Valentino's art here. I was not aware of Normal Man when I when I read this. I knew Valentino from uh, his What Ifs and the Guardians of the, Guardians of the Galaxy. And uh, I was aware of, uh, of Shadowhawk. A friend of mine uh, had a few issues of, of Shadowhawk. So it was quite surprising and refreshing to see an, an image artist do a style that was completely different from, uh, from what we're, we were used to. And it's kind of a shame that uh, Valentino does not produce more, more comics like this. So that's it for, for now. Uh, thank you very much for staying with me. And uh, I, hope, I hope you managed to enjoy a little bit of, what, of a touch of silver. I'm not sure if it's easy to find the, these, uh, these comics. Uh, like I said, is, the, the trait has the first five issues. There are six of them. The story does not end, but you can enjoy each issue independently. So if you can uh, if you, if you can find them in the back issue bins and the 50 cent bins, uh, do give it a chance. Um, spending $3 on, on six issues is probably better than spending $5 in one and for uh, most of today's comics. And you'll have a, you can enjoy uh, the feeling of what, what it's like to be a, a child who is discovering comics for, uh, for the first time. So that's for, that's for now. Um, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do for my next video. Um, I'm going to my collection, see if I can pick up something that uh, I found out of the ordinary. Uh, but until then, we'll, I'll probably come back for next week, for, before the weekend. Uh, but until then, uh, keep reading old comics. <laughs>